Om Namah Shivaya Namah Shivaya Om Namah Shivaya Om Namah Shivaya Om Namah Shivaya Namah Shivaya Om Namah Shivaya Om Namah Shivaya Om Sutta said O oh, wise sages, please listen to the narrative of holy centers with Shiva's temples, all of which accord salvation. Thereafter, I shall tell you their traditions for the welfare of the people. The earth, 50 crores of yojanas in extent, abounding in mountains and forests, supports the people at the bidding of Shiva. The Lord has himself raised up these temples and holy centers in different places for the liberation of the residents of those localities. These temples, whether self-risen or not, in view of their being accepted as a frequent resort by the sages and devas, are intended for the redemption of the people. In these holy centers and temples, ablutions, charitable gifts, japa, etc. must be regularly performed. Otherwise, men are sure to be affected by ailments, penury, dumbness, etc. If a man dies anywhere in Bharatavarsha, he shall be reborn again as a man if he has resided in a holy center where there is a self-risen phallic emblem of Shiva. O Brahmanas, committing sins in a holy center is of ineffable character. When a man stays in a holy center, he must not commit even the smallest sin. Somehow, men must strive to find a residence in a holy center. On the shores of the ocean, and in the confluence of hundreds of rivers, there are many such holy centers and temples. The holy river Saraswati is said to have sixty mouths, or holy centers, on its banks. Hence, an intelligent man must stay on its banks, he shall attain Brahma's region gradually. The river Ganga, flowing from the Himalaya mountains, is very holy with its hundred mouths. There are many holy centers on its banks, such as Kashi, etc. Its banks are highly sacred in the month of Mrigashirsha, or when Brihaspati, Jupiter, is in Capricorn Rashi. The river Sonabhadra of ten mouths is holy, and yields all cherished desires. By ablutions therein and observing fast, the devotee shall attain the region of the god Ganesh. The holy Narmada is a great river of twenty-four mouths. By a dip therein and residing on its banks, the devotee shall attain the region of Vishnu. The river Tamasa is of twelve mouths, and Reva has ten mouths. Godavari is very holy, and it quells the sins of murdering a brahmana or slaughtering a cow. It is said to have twenty-one mouths and accords Rudraloka. Krishnaveni is a sacred river destroying all sins. It is said to have eighteen mouths and it accords Vishnu Loka. Tungabhadra has ten mouths and it accords Brahma Loka. The holy Suvarna Mukhari is said to have nine mouths. Those who fall from Brahmaloka are born there. By residing on the banks of the auspicious rivers Saraswati, Pampa, Kanya, and Svetanadi, one shall attain Indraloka. The great river Kaveri, flowing from the mountain Sahya, is very holy and is said to have twenty-seven mouths. It accords all cherished desires. Its banks are the bestowers of heaven and the regions of Brahma and Vishnu. The devotees of Shiva are the bestowers of Shiva Loka and accord cherished desires. When Jupiter and the sun are in Mesha Rashi, the devotee shall take the holy bath in Naimesha and Badara. Worship thereafter accords Brahma Loka. When the sun is in Karakata or Singha, one shall take bath in the Sindhu, Indus. On that occasion, drinking the sacred water of Kedar, an ablution therein accords perfect knowledge. Shiva himself has mentioned before 
that bath in the Godavari in the month of Singha, when Jupiter is in Singha Rashi, accords his region. When Jupiter and the Sun are in Kanya Rashi, ablution shall be performed in the rivers Jamuna and Sona, the fruit of which is great enjoyment in the worlds of Dharma and Dante, Ganesha. When the Sun and Jupiter are in Tula, the devotee shall take bath in the Kaveri, the fruit whereof is the attainment of all cherished desires, as stated by Vishnu himself. The devotee who takes bath in the river Narmada in the month of Vrishika, when Jupiter is in Vrishika, attains Vishnu Loka. Brahma has stated that the bath in the Suvarna Mukhari when the Sun and Jupiter are in Danus accords Shiva Loka. The devotee shall take bath in the Jahnavi, Ganges, in the month of Margashirsha, when Jupiter is in Capricorn. After enjoying pleasures in the region of Brahma and Vishnu, he will gain perfect knowledge. In the month of Magh, when the sun is in Kumbha, Shraddha, offerings of Pinda, and water libations with jingali seeds raise the crores of manes on both paternal and maternal sides of the family. When the sun and Jupiter are in Mina, ablution shall be performed in Krishnaveni. The ceremonial ablutions taken in the different sacred waters in the respective months accord the region of Indra. An intelligent man shall resort to Ganga, or the Kaveri River. Certainly his sin will be quelled thereby. There are many holy centers yielding Rudraloka. The rivers Tamraparni and Vegavati accord Brahmaloka. There are holy centers on their banks bestowing heaven on the worshiper. In between these rivers there are meritorious holy centers. Intelligent men residing there will reap the respective fruits thereof. Only by good conduct, good predilections, good concepts, and by being sympathetic can the devotee derive the benefit, not otherwise. Meritorious actions performed in a holy center flourish in many ways. Sinful acts committed in a holy center, though slight, become manifold. If the sin committed in a holy center is only for livelihood, the merit will destroy that sin. Merit accords prosperity and quells physical, verbal, and mental sins. O Brahmanas, the mental sin is adamantine in sticking to the sinner, and it continues for many kalpas. The mental sin can be wiped off only by meditation, and not otherwise. The verbal sin is wiped off by japa, and the physical sin by forcefully causing emaciation of the body. Sins committed by means of wealth can be wiped off by making charitable gifts, and not otherwise, though crores of kalpas may elapse. In some places, the increasing sin destroys the merit. Both merit and demerit have three aspects, the seed stage, flourishing stage, and the experiencing stage. If they are in the seed stage, they can be quelled by perfect knowledge. If they are in the flourishing stage, they can be quelled in the manner described before. If they are in the experiencing stage, they get destroyed only by experiencing their fruits and not otherwise, though one might have performed crores of meritorious deeds. If the seed or the flourishing seedlings are destroyed, what remains must be experienced and wiped off. If one regularly performs worship of gods, makes gifts to brahmanas, and performs sufficient penance, the experiencing becomes bearable. Hence, those who wish for happiness must refrain from committing sins.